Hello guys, this is Panzerbite36. Today's video is going to be a book review on this here, which is Stormgeschütz, Development Weaponry and Uniforms of the Wehrmacht Assault Gun Years 1940-45. This is distributed by Abdulink 502 which everybody knows as the company that makes those beautiful oil paints for modeling. They are part of MIG Productions, which is done by association of AK Interactive. So if you want to buy this book, it's probably on the AK Interactive website. I believe that's where I got it. I did not get sent this. got it myself, so it's an unbiased review. And usually I don't do book reviews on this channel. I like to focus more on the kits. But I am a big Stug fan, and so I figured that I would be able to actually give you guys a pretty honest opinion about how good this book is and also I kind of want it for myself because it's pretty cool. They also make a few other books on different vehicles I believe, different units, and there's one on DAC vehicles and there's one on Panther tanks maybe and uh, maybe there'll be more coming soon so those books are probably going to be similar to this one. Essentially this is a um, like an introductory level book about, as I kind of say here, the development of different variants, basic identifying features and stuff like that, all talking about the Sturmgeschütz, not only the Stug 3, which most of it is about, but also the Stug 4, and other assault guns like the Sturm Tiger, Sturm Panzer 4, the Brumbar, as we call it. They also have a little bit on uh, the support vehicles, or like specific ammunition carrying vehicles meant uh, for Stug units, and also they have some stuff on uniforms, which is very important because Sturmgeschütz crews, for the most part, were not part of the tank corps, they are actually part of the artillery branch, so they had artillery uniforms which were unique from tank uniforms. Uh, tank uniforms. So I want to go through a little bit of this book and just show you some of the basic stuff. I like it a lot. There's a lot of good stuff in there. I only noticed about three inaccurate things and they're very very minor and they have a lot of good stuff in here about camouflages which is very important to me because model kit companies often get that wrong in the instruction manuals in the back but they get that right here. So we're gonna go through a little bit of this right now. The book is very high quality, hardcover, about 120 pages. Not that expensive, which is very, very good, because modeling reference books are usually quite expensive. The book was translated from Spanish, as far as I can tell. It's very good for the most part. A couple points, it's a little bit mechanical. You can tell what they're trying to say, but it's the wording might not be 100% perfect. And a good example of that is right here, where they forgot to change the word index to English. So this book mainly consists of a lot of large black and white photos, which are a great reference. You can see nice camouflage patterns. If you want to do winter camouflage, these are usually really crappy. Uh, an example of an Aranus caption is here. They call this an Aus B. It's actually an Aus A, but that's very, very minor. But then on the next couple pages, they get a couple of very important things right, identifying super early Aus Bs, which look almost exactly like Aus As. Um, like, for example, here they're talking about, you can see it has a, the same sprocket as the Aus A, but it's been widened. And they get lots of good technical stuff like that correct here, where you can kind of tell specific time frames or specific variants of the Stug 3 by stuff they're pointing out, like the viewports or the, the wheels and stuff like that. That's a lot of weathering that an IPMS judge would tell you is inaccurate. Um, yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> they also have a lot of... Uh, the first bunch of pages is basically just saying brief histories of specific Stug units. There were so many of these, most of them didn't last that long. So they're just giving you a brief paragraph when it, when it was made, when it broke up, what happened to it at the end. And later on, that should give you a whole two pages of a bunch of Stug little emblems so you can tell what unit they were by like the little marking they have on the on the tank, for example, like that thing on the back. I also mentioned that in the caption as well. Some nice snow on tanks. There's some more nice snow on tanks right here. And some more winter camouflages. Good stuff. Nice stuff like this. This is so cool. This is an emblem on the vehicle or like a, a little marking to show how many fortifications they've taken out. I like to see stuff like that because if you add it to your tank, it makes it a little more unique and interesting. Also nice mud there. Here we have stuff I like to see. Like I was saying before, this book has a lot of good camouflage stuff, right, about the colors of how tanks were painted. Uh, people, yeah, people often get this wrong, inspired by the incorrect instruction painting guides in the back of model kits. Here's a Stug 3F, here's a Stug 3F8. These were not painted in Dunkelgelb, the standard German yellow. They actually painted in tropical camouflage colors, even though they didn't actually fight in North Africa. They fought in southern Russia, even in like Kharkov and Stalingrad. You can see them in tropical camouflages. They're kind of like different shades of yellows and beiges, but they're not Dunkelgelb. So this is good stuff. They get it all right here. They're explaining it. And I like to see that because 
this is the stuff I like. I, I love when I like to see like cool camouflages, unique features on vehicles, and putting a nice tropical camouflage in the winter in Kharkov, 1943 basically, is very interesting, but also very, very accurate. You have some Stug 4 stuff here. I'm not a big fan of Stug 4s. I think they're very ugly, but there's some good stuff here. I don't have very much information. I don't really know much about Stug 4s at all, honestly. Another incorrect caption. I already pointed out one before. This They call this an initial production out of SMG. It's actually an early production. You can tell because the, there's a bolt section across above the driver's viewport. An initial production Stug 3, like this right here, has two little periscope viewports for the driver. That might have just been a translation error from Spanish because they're just talking about this is an early vehicle. Um, and that you mentioned how it's been how the periscope has been bolted over. Um, but initial production is actually a distinct variant of this Duke 3 G. This should be an early production. But that's pretty picky. Lots more good photos here. This unit is very well photographed. Super cool stuff if you want to see how stowage is applied to tanks. That's really, really cool. Also, Zimrit. A couple more things I want to point out that they get very correct here. Actually, first, let's point out the other incorrect things. So, I already pointed out two incorrect captions. This is the last one. These two are switched. This one refers to that photo. This one refers to that photo. Once you read it, it's pretty obvious. I'm talking about Ausf F with gray. That's what this is. That's those three captions, or I guess four if you include this is two. That's all that's incorrect in this book as far as I can tell. And they're very, very minor things, like I said. More important color stuff here. Um, I love this. This is this is so good. <laughs> a lot of people think that early Stug 3s were painted in entirely gray, which it looks like in black and white photos, because in black and white photos, dark reddish brown looks very, very dark, kind of like gray. So the camouflage becomes invisible. In fact, all Stug 3 House A and the first maybe two months of Stug 3 House B were painted in this two-tone camouflage, which is gray with a one-third application of dark brown. So this is an House A. An early House B looks like this, but with that drive sprocket. So if you see that drive sprocket with the little round holes instead of the triangular one, you can tell it's an early tank and it probably should have this camouflage on it. Modeling companies always miss this in their instructions. It's it should be on all of these vehicles, and it's more interesting than just gray. It's actually brown and gray. You often see people modeling this camouflage on Panzer threes that are in Poland. This camouflage was maintained for a longer period on Stug three. Here we have some gray and some winter camouflages, and here we have tropical camouflages. So we've got this is what I was talking about before. Stug three Aus F, Stug three Aus F eight. This is Tropin one, which is Ral eight thousand and one-third application of RAL 7008, which is the greenish color over the beige. This is like what you see on Tiger 131, which has been restored to a very high degree of accuracy. Here is Tropin 2, the second tropical camouflage scheme, which is RAL 7 or RAL 8020, the pinkish yellow, with a one-third application of RAL 7000 or 7027, which is what you see on this tank right here. Okay, again, cool camouflages. This is important stuff. These people where these tanks are often shown as gray or Dunkelgelp, which is incorrect. Only a handful of these were gray. Some of these were gray, none, none of these were Dunkelgelp. They were usually tropical camouflages, even when they were fighting in Russia. You see these in the winter of Kharkov, in tropical camouflage in the snow. That's super cool. No one ever models it because they're misinformed by the instruction manuals and books. They talk a lot about camouflages here, along with the captions for the previous uh, color renderings. Same thing here, they're talking about uh, how after August 1944, all Stug 3s, as well as all other German tanks, were actually painted with camouflage at the factory. There was no more field-applied camouflage after August 1944. It was entirely done at the factory with a high degree of uh, standardization. So basically, if you see two tanks side by side, they'll have the same camouflage. They show that correctly here, they talk about it correctly here, and uh, even more... Here we have a late, a late, another late Stug 3. This is a, actually a Stormabitza, so it's a howitzer variant with a bigger gun. Also has a factory applied camouflage. Very, very important stuff. And they talk about that a lot here. They talk about all the paints. It's super good. <laughs> we also have a bunch of stuff at the back here about support vehicles. Mainly the SDK of 252, which is basically an SDK of 251, which is the baby half track. But it's the ammunition carrying variant that was used exclusively with Stug 3 units. So you see that slanted back piece. 
if you're doing a diorama with some stood three outs C, D, or E, these are excellent fits because it's basically what this vehicle was designed for and used for. I think Dragon makes a kit of it, which is probably all right. Storm Panzer IV, people call the Brumbar. Storm Tiger. They also have a little bit on this Storm Infantry uh, Shoots 33, which is that big box on a Stug 3 chassis I built recently. And the whole rest of the back of the book here, about 30 pages, is all talking about the uniforms that Stug crews wore. They were not Panzer crews, they were part of the artillery branch, so they had unique uniforms that were not black, but were instead this dark greenish gray color. A lot of good stuff here. They also had unique uh, distinctions in their uniform and stuff like that, so. All very important stuff if you want to paint your figures to go with your tank crew, or your, or I guess your tank. So that's pretty much this book. I like it a lot. Like I said, there's only like three wrong captions, or I guess four if you want to count one for two, but they're very, very minor. And the translation is like 99% great, and the only parts where it's a little bit wrong, it's obvious what they're trying to say. So I do like this book a lot. I recommend it. It is a great introductory level technical guide to like if you want to know basic features to identify what Ausführung uh, the Stug 3 is, if you want to tell, if you want to tell well, that's an Aus B versus an Aus C, or you want to see some good reference photos for camouflage or some mud or winter camouflage or all that cool stuff, and also you want to know a lot about the correct camouflage patterns that are applied to your tanks. This book is great, also uniforms and a little bit of other stuff on Stug 4s, other assault guns like that. I like it a lot, I recommend it. Um, I was not paid to say this at all, I bought this book myself, but if you want to get it, it's on the AK website, that's where I got it at least. Maybe you can get it somewhere else, I don't know very much, but it's a good book, I like it a lot, and I'm a Stug fan, so it gets my seal of approval. As always, huge thanks to the Patreon and PayPal supporters, they give me a little bit of money every month, which helps me buying kits and weathering products and books like this for you guys to see in videos. Also, huge thanks to everyone who's posting comments and liking the videos. A lot of help for me, and also if you have any questions or comments, post them below. It, um, I logic answer them if there are questions, and I always read through all the comments. So, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you next time. Goodbye and happy modeling.